All right, let's settle this one because I see it everywhere. Timing doesn't matter with peptides. Yeah, and apparently stretching doesn't matter either, right? Let's go ahead and stamp that one fiction before someone decides to run a growth phase peptide right alongside their morning coffee. Here's the deal, timing absolutely matters. Not because your body's going to fall apart if you get it wrong, but because peptides communicate differently depending on when they're used. Remember, peptides work through natural processes. They're selective messengers that target specific pathways to support recovery, hormone balance, and even immune function. Taking GH-supporting peptides like CJC-1295, ipamorelin, they work best when your body's growth hormone pulses naturally, usually before sleep or sometimes after a workout, when recovery signals are at their peak. Try using them right before a heavy meal or sugar spike? That's like whispering in a nightclub. Nobody's going to hear the signal. Then you've got mitochondrial peptides like MOTC or SS31. Those are often explored in the morning or pre-workout, when higher cellular energy and endurance actually matter. Now for the healing peptides, like BPC-157 and TB-500. They're more flexible, but timing still counts. For injury repair, consistency and localized support matter the most. For general recovery, researchers often stagger them, morning and evening, or on a five days on, two days off rhythm. And yes, cycling is part of timing too. Your body adapts, running a compound endlessly can make the signal fade out. That's why four to six week on periods with short breaks are so common. It keeps those pathways responsive. The type of peptide matters, and so does your research. It's the difference between working with your body's rhythm and working against it. You wouldn't want to down an espresso at midnight and expect great sleep. The same logic here, supporting your body's timing and it'll support you right back. Train harder, recover smarter, and perform stronger.